Hi, I'm John Acuff, and I'm about to have a productive conversation with Mike Party. Welcome to a Flashback Friday episode of A Productive Conversation. I'm Mike Vardy. Now, this is the first ever Flashback Friday episode. And what this means is every Friday, we're going to release an episode that was previously released a number of weeks, months, even years ago, perhaps not even from this original incarnation of this podcast. It could be from my old podcast, Productive Artie. We might be able to even scrounge up some past conversations from podcasts that I've been part of even prior to that or outside of that. But it's just a way to create some more conversations for you to listen to and also provide you with maybe some updates or some significance around those Flashback Friday episodes that might be more timely. And there's nothing more timely than a book coming out and and that's exactly what we're going to be talking about today as we open up this Flashback Friday episode with John Acuff. Now, the episode you're about to hear is when John released his book, All It Takes is a Goal. And John and I had a bit of a conversation beforehand, but he's been on the show before. You know, we've talked about Finish. I uh, have his book, Do Over. I really enjoyed his book, Soundtracks, and his upcoming book that comes out literally next week. You can pre-order it now as this episode is dropping is How Teens Win, which he co-wrote with his kids. And, uh, you know, if you have a chance to pick it up, we're going to put it in the show notes so that way you can check out that book as well as all of his other books because John has nothing but prolific. He is funny. He delivers solid messages. I've really enjoyed his work throughout the years. So I couldn't think of a better guest to kick off the new series, so to speak, here on a productive conversation called Flashback Friday than with John Acuff. So without further ado, here is my conversation with John Acuff from September of last year. Sit back, relax, and enjoy this Flashback Friday episode of A Productive Conversation with John Acuff. John, thank you so much for uh, joining us today. For those that are Time Crafting Trust Premium members, they're in the live stream right now, going to be able to maybe submit some questions. But it's great to have you back on the show. Yeah, thanks for doing it a second time. I appreciate that. No problem at all. So the last time we had you on the show, uh, you uh, it was a, for the book Finish. But mm -hmm. it seems like you weren't finished because you've got another no, book. <laughs> no. That's good, dude. That's good. Nice. So like I'm that. holding on to, and if those those that are in the live stream seeing on YouTube, all it takes yeah. is a goal, the three step plan to yeah. ditch regret and tap into your massive potential. Um, first off, uh, the last book that you wrote, I want to start there because sure. I just want to share, and anyone who's listening to this, either the 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 broadcast or the live stream, I loved soundtracks. I absolutely, and I know you co-wrote um, soundtracks for teens. I think it was right. Is that what it was yeah. called for? Mm -hmm. for yeah, it's for, called uh, Your New Playlist. Right, right. And uh, but and that was your most recent book before this one. But mm -hmm. soundtracks, I remember distinctly walking um, to uh, just on my daily. I take a daily walk, and I was listening to the audio version of your book. And you're talking, and I'm sitting there going, "Son of a gun, he's talking to me. Like he's legit uh, that's talking great. to that's me." Great. Um, so I want to just thank you. If anyone out there has not picked up that book, I mean, I, I loved it. And, and now I'm looking at this one and I want to know like the trajectory from sure. soundtracks to this, cause you've, you've written plenty of books and, and the trajectory from start to finish, no pun intended, yeah. um, through, through do over and, and all those other ones, we get to, you know, soundtracks and then all it takes is a goal. What? What led to that? Like, what was the trajectory sure. there? Yeah, I mean, I don't I, I don't really have a long like 10 year window, 20 year plan. So I, I never want to exaggerate that. I'm like, oh, here's what's going to happen in seven years. Um, so with your new playlist, that happened because when soundtracks came out, so many parents said, do you have a version for teenagers? And mm -hmm. that never happened in any other book I'd written. So nobody, no parent was ever like, do you have a version for teenagers of do over? Um, but so many parents said, Hey, my teen is struggling with mindset. If I could have learned how to change my mind and in, in high school, it would have changed my life. So that's how that one happened. And then my books, the way I write them is pretty simple. I find a challenge, a struggle in my own life. I work on it. And then I see if other people have a similar challenge. So like, if it helps me, I go, man, I think this, this might really be awesome. Let me see if other people have the same challenge. So, and sometimes they don't. And sometimes they go, that was a me issue. And it's just going to end up being a blog post or something small, or maybe a podcast episode. 
But what happened with this one, we took my oldest daughter, Ellie, to tour college. And it was the college I went to, the college my wife went to. And we were standing on the quad. My wife said, wasn't college amazing? And I was having the opposite experience. I said, no, it was a train wreck. Like I was, I, what a wasted four years. Like I wasted all this potential. I got rejected from every fraternity. I was so insecure. I was from Massachusetts and had gone to school in Alabama. So like I was really having culture shock and I felt insecure, but didn't know how to say I'm insecure. So instead I was just sarcastic and really arrogant um, and just a wreck of a college experience. And as I was driving back to Nashville, I felt this sense of regret, but I just written soundtracks and knew I get to choose my mindset. So I said, okay, I sitting in the regret, sitting in the bitterness, not helpful. What do I want to do instead? And I thought, you know, that was four years of my life. I'll live 40 or 50 more years. Hopefully, what can I do with those years? Can I tap into my potential? And then I started to go, are other people feeling the same way? And that's where we, you know, there's a PhD named Mike Peasley and he and I launched a big research study to figure out, do you, you know, like do other people feel that like that they're not living up to potential? And we asked 3000 people and 96% said they're not living up to their potential. So then I've got the two things that I'm like, oh, okay. And the final one is I go to the marketplace and see if I can fit in. And a lot of books about potential are fuzzy and high level and don't answer what you can actually do. Like I write books, hopefully that answer the question, what do I do with this on a Tuesday? Okay. But what do I do with this on a Tuesday? Like mindset is fuzzy. Okay. Here's soundtracks. Here's what you do on a Tuesday. Potential is fuzzy. Okay. Here's a bunch of frameworks. Here's some steps. So that's how the book came about as a long answer, but that's the, the summary. What I love about that is the, the last thing you just mentioned. It's, it's the betterment at random slash or even deliberate times like Tuesday, like, you know, like, like mm -hmm. it, it's, it, it, I wouldn't d deep dives sometimes happen when you don't expect to be deep diving. Right. You know what I mean? Like you're yeah. like, you get yeah. into, and that's what I found when I, whenever I read some of your stuff, John, it's like, first off, you've got a really affable way of writing, which I appreciate. Oh, and I know you. you, and I know you, I mean, I've seen you speak before at world domination summit. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I know that we've had conversations in when mm -hmm. we were there before and stuff like when that event was going on in Portland and, and I know that um, a tribe as well, uh, Jeff yep. Goins' old conference. Um, but what I, and you also have a performance background too. You've done stand up, you've put that mm -hmm. into practice. So what I like is it just, it feels um, doable. It feels like, mm -hmm. th like, this is a regular guy, a regular person. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, 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 I, and, yeah, totally. and, 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 why I think that works for this is because we've seen like goal setting and we've, we've heard about it. And we've also heard like, don't set goals. like Leo Babata famously said, like no goals. And, and yeah. um, you know, there's, there's like this, this either you do it or you don't like, there's this very you know, black or white. And what, what I like about mm -hmm. this is that you kind of say there's more to it than that. You know, the idea of, and one of the quotes that I loved in the book was we, we just talking about potential. Potential is the gap between your vision and your reality. No one really, I think, that, I, that I've read um, dives into this idea of potential, other than talking about being like a multi-potentialite and things that we've heard. Yeah. And, and So why do we just, I wouldn't say dismiss it, but why is it not something that you feel we dig into deeply enough? And it's just something like, you've got potential, and then it's just kind of like, okay, but what do I do with that? Yeah, I mean, I think part of it is it's hard. Like it's hard to like we dismiss things that are challenging sometimes because they feel challenging. And so we go, OK, you know, I'll dismiss it because then I don't have to deal with it. I think part of it is like I try to write books. I, I said this the other day to somebody with my heart, not just with my hands. Like we've both read books that were written by the person's hands, but they're not in the book. There's not a heart. No human has ever tried this. You know, like it's technically true. It's not practically true. Yep. So they go spend the first two hours every day on this one thing and you'll be, and that's technically true. But the average person can't, like I talked to a dad the other day. that was like, how do I tell my two-year-old, my four-year-old that I need to read for two hours first when I come down in the morning? And it would be great if they would stop bothering me because I'm going to be reading like Tolstoy. Like, I, so I try to go, how do I make it? practically true how do i make it written with my heart so that it's real it's relatable but as far as like concepts like potential um i just don't like i've benefited from the last 12 years of working with people on their goals so i couldn't have written this book first book like right. somebody asked me they're like guaranteed goals i don't know about that and i said i 100 understand that's a weird word to apply to goals 
but this is my ninth book. Like I, my first book, I couldn't say there's guaranteed goals. By my ninth, I get like the week this comes out, I will have turned in my 10th book. Like mm-hmm. that's not a magic to me. That's like, I'm using the principles in this book. So I'm guaranteed like my 11th book will be due next year. Like I'm going to keep doing that. And so I think that's part of it is that I've benefited from kind people online in a community that will test the ideas, that will challenge the ideas. So when I go, hey, I think this is the solution, they'll poke holes in it. So by the time the book happens, the book's the last thing. Right. I've tested it with hundreds of real people and I feel good about the ideas. And then people read the book and go, man, that actually worked. And I go, yeah, I we you should have seen the early ones. They did not work, you know, Mm -hmm. like, but, but as we tested it now, we're like, Oh, this works. Like, so yeah, I I think that's, what's fun to me about the book writing process that I have now is that there, it's not just my story. Like you and I, like we both, like we would probably both agree that like, God forbid I write a ninth memoir type book. Like I'm 47. Like at some point you can't be like, I found a different element of my life that is worth a book. It's like, what? Like you haven't been to Mars, dude, like pump the brakes. (laughs) So like that's where, but if I can teach a practical thing like potential and then a bunch of people can benefit from it, I'm willing to spend years doing that. And what's interesting is, is again, I think like as I went through it, you've got a framework and approach that, kind of valid, like you mentioned guaranteed goals, which we're going to get into, because as soon as I saw that word, I'm like, wait, wait a second. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Right. You're like, okay, sure. (laughs) Sure. Yeah. But to your point, the benefit of the doubt exists because you've put in the work, you've put in the time you've, and Mm -hmm. it's not like you just, you know, I know that when you put a book together again, to your point, the heart, the hands, but you've also like the effort goes in there. You actually talk about you actually talk about effort. I'm going to, because I got a plethora of notes here. Um, and that comes into the, the idea of, of guaranteed goals, the idea of effort. We'll come back to that. But I want to talk about this one thing that you said, really, you know, and I think this is, we talk about potential and we talk about getting in the way, what gets in the way. Um, the hardest person I deal with every day is me. Yeah, yeah. Oh, can you, I, I'm sure everyone listening can relate to that. Give me a recent example of that for you. Because I mean, we often write about the, you know, <laughs> easy, dude, easy. Okay. I, I wish it was hard to think of one, but it's easy. So this is like a, ch- a chance where I was act like I was acting offended where I didn't need to be offended. And I was going to blow up a situation just out of pettiness and immaturity. And it's, it revolves around a podcast, which is appropriate. Somebody emails me to be on their podcast and we're setting it up. And then they email me and ask me all these questions about my mic. And if I know how to use a mic and I immediately on my end bowed up and was like, I know how to use a mic. I have a mic with a stand. I have a sure, like I probably have more downloads than they do. Like I immediately, like what I read, I added so much to their question. I added you idiot. You've Mm -hmm. never had a podcast. Like, and in the, in the past, I would have responded with something snarky with something like, don't worry. I got it. Like, and instead I was like, wait a second. They didn't say any of that. That's not helpful. We added a lot to that. Like one of the things in the, like uh, this concept I'm working on is like the, imagine if you wore like a Batman belt with all these salt containers. And every time you ate a meal, you salted it for like an hour first. And then you tasted it. And people were like, how was the meal? Like it was really salty. It just felt salty to me. Like you would go, well, you added a pound of salt. So like I added a pound of pettiness to that email. And so that's a, that's a, easy example of th- that was not beneficial to me and us having a good podcast episode. Mm-hmm. And so what I say in the book is like, whenever somebody goes, the only way, the only one standing in your way is you. I'm like, I know that guy is impossible. And so I was trying to get at this idea of like, I don't like when people are like, just leave the comfort zone. Why would I want to? It's right. comfortable. Like it's right there in the name. Like they say it, like you should just do it. So I don't like when people like present solutions like that again without a path Mm -hmm. like i like solutions with a path so my path was i'm gonna have to trick this guy out of the comfort zone i'm gonna have to find a way it's not just gonna be a lecture i'm not gonna shame him out and he think he's gonna stay as soon as i turn my back he's gonna run right back in like i'm gonna have to you know woo him out of the comfort zone because he is difficult how do i do that and when you frame it that way you start to have fun with it you start to go 
And we're, we're going to need some rewards. Like we're going to like, not like, we're going to need a little bit of reward every now and then, or yep. we're going to like, we're going to need some accountability. Like I, we're going to, Hey, we're going to, we're going to, and then it becomes this fun game versus why am I a failure and won't leave the comfort zone? Like I don't, you know, I, no one willingly leaves the comfort zone. No. And what, and what's tricky is comfort can turn to complacency without you even realizing oh, yeah. it. Oh, like yeah, that's, yeah. And that's the killer. And then well, you're like, oh, it, crap, how'd I get here? Shifting. Yeah. It's always shifting. Yeah. So like, if you're not regularly going, okay, I got to this one thing. Can I do it better? I got to this and not like manically, not like you don't enjoy where you are, but every time you achieve a certain level, you, that can become the comfort zone where you can, you know, where you can kind of just stay there and go. And then it's just like the comfort zone move to your next level and just set up shop. And then you're like, wait a second. I'm back in that rut that I left last time. I'm going to have to, you know, so that's how I think about the comfort zone. And let's talk about the other ones. Cause there's the comfort zone, yeah. the potential zone and the chaos zone. I want to ask a very specific question about them in, yeah. in terms of high performance, which is burnout. So yeah. I think what's interesting as I was going through it, I'm like, okay, the comfort zone is a place where I think you can spend time in when you're burnt out too. Right. You know what I mean? When you're, when you're, because it's, it doesn't ask much from you at that point, yeah. right? You know, yeah. but the problem is, and you allude to this, is that the comfort zone can become uncomfortable the longer yeah. you stay there, either because your brain is going, hey, I'm so much more capable than what's going on right now, or, oh, crap, these opportunities that I've passed by are now, and I'm sliding down. So uh, I want to talk about all three, but I'd like to talk about the uh, the burnout and overwhelm that can kind of keep yeah. you from going into from, from staying out of the potential zone and going between the other two. Yeah. So that was what was interesting. The three zones came about where I kept meeting people who are high performers, but not high achievers. Mm -hmm. And we all know people who are capable of sporadic bursts of performance, but they never turn it into sustainable achievement. And so I realized they're bouncing back and forth between zones. And usually the ones that bounce between are comfort zone and chaos zone. And we talk about the comfort zone constantly. We barely talk about the chaos zone. And the chaos zone is where you try to do everything. You say, you hear an you know, inspiring podcast and say, I'm going to start a podcast. I'm going to lose 10 pounds. I'm going to date my wife. I'm going to you know, learn how to whittle. I'm going to like, you come over like 50 and I'm going to do it all this weekend. And then you can't, of course. And so you burn out and you swing back. That's why we have the phrase yo-yo diet in America. You yo-yo mm -hmm. back and forth. So for me, the way to prevent that is to stay in that potential zone where it's like the Goldilocks zone. It's not too much. It's not too little. Um, and so like, I think a big part of that, and we talk about this later in the book about is the fuel you're using. So like, if you're using a sustainable fuel, like joy is a wonderful fuel like craft is a wonderful fuel if you're using the wrong fuel you are always going to be headed to burnout because you're engaged like you're guzzling anger as your fuel or you're mm -hmm. guzzling proving somebody wrong and like i've met 70 year olds who are worth a hundred million dollars and are still trying to prove to their dad that they're good at business the dad's been dead 20 years mm -hmm. like they're proving anything to the dad but their fuel they tapped into was proving somebody wrong anger world's out to get me they accomplished a lot i mean they wrecked everyone around them like no one around them like has a good relationship with them but so i think a big part of it is how do i use the right fuel for sustained performance um and then like even even when you have like like the potential zone i'll give you an example i there's writing is harder for me than reading like right it's just so i know when i'm feeling tired i might read some fiction like i'm still not going all the way to like oh i'm gonna binge watch 12 hours of tv or like something that won't fill me up like that's the difference is that like relaxation versus like the getting stuck in the comfort zone to me are different relaxation renews you there's elements of the comfort zone where you don't feel better so like rarely do I meet somebody that goes, yeah, I scrolled on Instagram for like three hours and man, it renewed me. I feel so me. It really, that was what I needed. Like they feel grosser, you know? So there's yeah. activities that were sold as comfortable that I still think on the back end, you have to go, well, what, what was the result? Like, did I relax after? Like, did I, you know, did I feel better? Like, no, I just felt like I like gross for three hours that was comfort zone. That wasn't renewal. That wasn't refreshment. And you talked about fuel. And it's interesting because I think a lot of the fuel that keeps us 
in those places are things that are out of our control. Like we try to control the things that won't be controlled, right? Like, and they're yeah. designed to, you know, talk about social media and things. Like when I talk to people at journaling, they're like, oh, I don't, I don't journal. I'm like, do you post on Facebook or Instagram? Oh yeah. All the time. Like you're journaling. You're just yeah, journaling yeah. for the entire I world. <laughs> I don't know how to tell you this. You're journaling right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. You're exactly. Yeah, exactly. And then they're like, Oh, oh. I'm like, what if you took some of that time and put it towards like that journaling self-reflection that reflective practice mm-hmm. and they're like yeah that'd be interesting but i don't have time for that I'm like we literally just found the time like we literally <laughs> yeah, just yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, it's right just, there it's and, right there and frankly social media would be a whole lot better if more people did that rather than like oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah those- exactly like not every thought needs to be public. No, not not everyone. Not every. Not all of them. Some nope. of them, sure. Not all of them. Not all of them. That's um, so funny. Let's dial into the goals a bit. Like the idea of yeah. so you know what I again the rule of three is always fun. I mean, I guess comedy, yeah. right? Like it works in yeah. comedy. It works pretty much yeah, everywhere yeah, else. Yeah. What am I going to invent? Some new like the rule of six point five. <laughs> Nobody's going to buy that. So we've got easy goals, middle goals, and guaranteed yeah. goals, and they all have different kind of escape mechanisms, uh, yeah. and and also kind of lead you into the potential zone. Um, w- one of the things that I think it, this, this comes up a lot when we talk about productivity methodologies and time management mm-hmm. is they spend, when it comes to getting things done, we've heard the, I mean, people in the getting things done community have heard the, the term polishing the runway. They never really yeah. get up to those horizons yeah. that David Allen kind of put a, put in his book. They, they spend time at those little simple single actions that keeps them, quote, doing productive instead of being productive. So they never really uh, elevate. That's good. That's a good right? distinction. Right? So how do you, and I mean, the goal, the, the book talks about this, but the the distinction between the three, I think, is important. But how do you make sure that you don't get caught in one, like doing easy goals all the time and tricking yourself into being fulfilled by, say, easy goals when some of those get when those guaranteed goals, as you've mentioned, and even the middle goals are like there, there's that much of a level upness to a degree. Do you know what I'm talking yeah. about? Totally, totally. So it's almost impossible to just get stuck doing easy goals if you're doing genuine goals. And what I mean by that is you will naturally want more. Mm -hmm. Like if you achieve some things, you will naturally go, I want some more of that. I want that. That's just the human response. And I'll give you an example of that. So I tell people all the time, I'm not naturally disciplined or I don't have a lot of grit or persistence or willpower. That didn't help me when I was in Atlanta. When I was in Atlanta, trying to figure out, you know, my life. I was at a career kind of crisis, had two kids under the age of four, Atlanta commute, beautiful wife, full-time day job at auto trader. I just started blogging. And when I started blogging, I was like, Oh, this is kind of like, not, not crazy. Like just started blogging a little bit and felt like this little sense of joy. And then I wanted to give more time to it. I didn't become great at managing time just because like I found something I enjoyed. And then I looked at time like logs and I wanted to throw as many logs into the fire of that thing as I could. Right. So suddenly I was like, I didn't tell myself, stop watching TV. You got to manage your time. I just started throwing those logs and it was like TV. So I always tell people like this to me, the secret of time management is find something you love so much that Netflix becomes boring. Mm. Like, where you just like, ugh, I don't even like, it's great. They got a ton of stuff. That's doing nothing for me. Like I can still relax and watch half an hour or whatever. I'm not anti TV by any means, but I think that's such a key to it. So as far as getting stuck doing easy goals, if you said I've, I've done easy goals for a year, I haven't progressed. I would go, I don't know that you have something you really enjoy yet. Cause the natural response is to go, man, I wrote 50 words. Like, I think I can write a hundred. Like, I think I can, like, you just, you naturally want to increase it. Like podcasting is that way. You never, like when you've had moments where you really enjoyed the podcast, you didn't want to do it less. You didn't go, I love that so much. I'm going to kind of coast and take it off. Like if anything, you probably had to have people hold you back and go, whoa, 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 Mike, whoa, 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 Mike. Like, so when you find something like that and it doesn't have to be a perfect thing, that's why an easy goal is an experiment. You try 10 different things. Like they're not all going to turn into guaranteed goals. Like there's a lot of goals that I try and I go, like I tried drinking a gallon of water for two weeks and like every day for two weeks. I was like, this sucks. I hate this. Like Mm -hmm. I, all I learned is where every bathroom is. Like it, this is a dumb goal. Like I'm going to be on stage at a keynote and have to leave to go to the bathroom. Like, no, this isn't for me. I'm going to drink an appropriate amount of water, but I'm not going to believe some influencer who weighs 250 pounds and maybe has different water needs than I do. So like, but that was a goal where I was like, I tried it, didn't enjoy it, tested it, 
moved on. Like there's other ones where I go, I try CrossFit and that worked a little and I tried it and made it a middle goal and then I made it a bigger goal. That one progressed up the ladder, but not every goal will. Let's talk about the chaos uh, zone a bit more when it comes to goals, because I find, and as I was reading the book, I'm like, I, the, the teetering back and forth, mm-hmm. it's, it's interesting. And you mentioned the podcast thing. So that's why I bring this up because I was ready um, to kind of make some changes to my podcasting um, kind of regimen, but I've got a lot of other things going on. And my, sure. someone had like, initially I, I caught myself. I'm like, wait, hold yeah. up. Like, mm-hmm. and to me that, that felt very much like the chaos zone. And I think, I think for me, and I'd love to hear your thoughts on this when it comes to people who are trying to like, quote, be productive or cultivate mm-hmm. a sustained level of productiveness is this idea of, the chaos zone, I think, can do a lot of damage because nothing really gets its full, yeah. nothing realizes its full potential, right? No, no nothing gets excellent. Like nope. nothing gets excellent. And that's not failure. Again, that's just math. So the way I like to break it down, like, and again, I love, we overlap on so many ideas, which is why this is fun. But like, take time. I So what I'll do with time to people, they'll say like, hey, I've got 20 goals. No one ever reads my books or comes to my events or joins my communities and says, I don't have a single goal. I don't know any goals. They, they have the opposite problem. They have a hundred goals. I don't know where to start, don't, you know. And so I'll always go, well, let's do a time gap analysis. And I'll go, oh, what's that? Well, how much time will your goals cost? How much free time do you have right now? What's the gap? And most people have never done that and they feel like a failure. But if you do it and realize... week so what's gonna all of a sudden you realize very clearly i can't do all that like i really can't so the more i got serious about pursuing the things i cared about the more serious i got about time and time for me like the phrase i say all the time is time is your most valuable but also your most vulnerable resource Mm. it's your most vulnerable it can't protect itself it only knows how to do one thing which is flow and so then like again once i wanted to write more then i started to protect my time then i started to like i'm a friend asked me to do their podcast uh the other day and i i don't have time for it i'm gonna have to say no there would have been a time in my life though where out of guilt or out of i want them to like me i don't want to hurt their feelings whatever i would have said yes but now i'm like man, I, that's a really expensive hour. And I really want to, I want to steward my time. Well, so how do I, how do I do that? But once you see how much you want to do, um, and then the other thing is again, test those things with an easy goal. If you won't even do an easy version of it, you're not going to do the hard one. Mm -hmm. If I say, if you say to me, one of my open loop goals is to write a book and I go, cool, write a hundred words. And you go, nah, I'm not going to do that. (laughs) Then don't cut it off the list. That was the easiest part. If you won't do the easy, like the rest of it's going to suck. If you won't do that part, then like, let's just cut it off the list. Don't beat yourself up. Like, don't, don't carry around that fake goal. Well, you know, it's, this brings up another thing I was thinking about when we were talking about like breaking things down. So, so I'm working on a book proposal right now, but I hate writing book proposals. Hate it, hate it. Yeah. Hate it. I'd rather write. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the, the, oh man, your ego and all of it. It's hard. It's, like you're trying to prove that you're worthy of getting a book deal. Like, oh, yeah. it's hard. So dude. I think my agent tricked me into it by mm-hmm. actually saying, here, write the skeletal book outline. Okay. Okay. <laughs> write like table, like, yeah. and by the time I'm like, I, I think I was about two thirds of the way through all of this. And I'm like, yeah. Wait a minute. Uh-huh, and I, and so by the good. way, I don't think he was intentionally tricking me. I think he was yeah. like, these are the steps I'm going to, you know, I'm just going to give you the steps. This is what I need yeah. at this phase, at this phase. And by the time I was done, I'm like, wait a minute, I bet you the next step is. And he's like, you need to write a bio. And I'm, I'm like, oh, he's got me writing a book proposal. Book proposal. <laughs> That's so good, and dude. I'm like, oh, and so that was the thing. It was, it was like, oh, so, and frankly, I mean, I teach this stuff, break down a project into its smallest particles. And yeah. we're even like, we're not immune to the the things that, and why? Because it was very, it's comfortable not to do that. Yeah. But yeah. let's get to the guarantee that like the potential zone. If I want to have that book hit the right notes and do all the things that I wanted to do, mm-hmm. I need to get out of there and do things that are, that are going to, feel a little bit like, give me a bit of friction along the way. Give me yeah. and use that. Um, so let's talk about guaranteed goals. And and one of the things that you bring up, it's on page 134, which is related to like this idea of a calendar heist, which I think is awesome. And it reminded me of Ant-Man 
talking to oh, Tony Stark about the time great. heist in in in, in, so in, funny, in Endgame. Um, not only do minutes matter, but minute actions matter too. So, for somebody wa- listening or watching this right now, they're like, "I have these these goals, I have these things, but they just feel so lofty." That that quote, like that, tells you right there. It's it's the it's the combination of quantitative, yeah, and qualitative, right? Mm-hmm. So, let's. Can you give an example of of yeah. when when this actually was like when you this mattered? Like you're like, oh, this is where it kind of tri- flipped a switch for you. Yeah. So here's why it matters. Most people approach a goal like a ladder. We've used the word ladder already, but their ladder is 12 feet tall and has two rungs start the first day. And then the final project, like I launch a podcast, I make a million dollars, I run a marathon. And so imagine if I said, Hey, here's your ladder. You just have to get to the top. So I guess you'll have to jump 12 feet in the air, which is two feet higher than a basketball rim, grab it, and then do the world's worst pull up all the way up. Good luck. And they go, I don't, that sounds terrible. Where my version is, what if there was a ladder that had a rung every six inches? Like, could you climb, like, you think you could safely and maybe even enjoyably get to the top of that, like, ladder? And they go, yeah, that'd be really easy. And I go, exactly. So my goals have a lot of steps. They have, a like, the minute action. So that's where the easy goals, middle goals, guaranteed goals. So I'm constantly, like, and, like, I think this stems from just being kind to myself, where, I want to have as many possible actions that move my goal forward as possible. I don't want two actions because maybe I don't, you know, like if I was going to write a book, imagine if I only had two rungs, if I was going to write a book and the first rung said, write the first page. And the last one was finish the book every day. I'd feel like a failure Mm -hmm. every day for a solid year that I didn't finish the book. I feel like a failure because I only had two rungs, but instead I have today we're doing 200 words tomorrow. We're going to try 300 Okay, we're going to talk to Mike on a podcast. Like that's part of the book process. We're going to, I have, so like every day I'm climbing the rungs. By the time I'm in the middle of the ladder, there's no way I'm not finishing that. Like that's a guarantee. Like I don't have to guess, no, this book is getting finished. Like this is going to happen. Like, and a smaller version of that. So the reason the book's called All It Takes is a Goal is I really believe you can take a desire. Mm -hmm. If you want to achieve it, you turn it into a goal and then you're going to achieve it. And it could be any desire. So for instance, I wanted to be a better friend. Like I realized I was isolating. I was feeling lonely. I needed more community. That's a fuzzy idea. I can't execute against that. So I'm like, okay, well, how do I make a goal? So I was like, all right, I'm going to text one friend every day for a solid month and just encourage them. So I did that. And at the end of the month, I was guaranteed to have been a better friend than at the start. Like that wasn't magic. That was a process. Like, you know, and so then I was like, I want to be a better dad. And I was like, how do I like, that's so fuzzy. I can't execute against that. I was like, what if I did that same process, but instead of 30 people, I just encouraged my youngest daughter 30 days in a row. And I made a list of the, like, as I thought of them, like, and now I've got my head and my heart engaged. I'm like, Hey guys, Google amazing things about this girl that maybe I miss because I'm a busy dad sometimes. And, and then I have a list of them and I'm writing them down and I'm collecting them and it's really fun. And then in the morning when she's getting ready for school, I go, Hey, the way you did that class the other day was really brave. Like when I was in high school, I don't know if I would have had the courage to do that. Like I really, at the end of 30 days of encouraging my daughter, it'll be impossible for me to have not been a better dad. Like that's a guarantee. And that's what I like about the latter concept is by the time I'm in the middle, like this is happening. Like this is, and I, I've told a bunch of people this, I couldn't have written this in book one um, because I didn't know. I didn't yeah. know. It would have been arrogant and unfounded for me to write this in book one. In book nine, like it's not an accident. This is the ninth book. It, it's not a, like, it's not an accident. I, I've turned in the 10th already. Like this is happening because I learned how to climb the ladder, which I think anybody can do. Um, and, and then good stuff happens. You get to the top of the ladder and go, Oh, here's another book I did. Oh, that's fun. It's, it's, you know, when I talk about theming and monthly theming comes in, uh, I've had people say to me, you know, I'm like, my, my, my goal for December is, you know, my monthly theme is relationships. So how do I nurture? And they're like, well, wouldn't every month be like that? I'm like, yes, but how often does that get my attention? I need to yeah. have it. That, no. Like people are like, you know, like, why do you have like call mom on in Todoist that recurs Dude, I every I have week? it over. I can see the, I have it on a post-it note right there. Like yeah. right over there. It says call mom Friday. Yeah. And I, I move that post-it note from like to do to, to done, like done every week. Yep. 
And the thing is, is people are like, well, shouldn't, shouldn't you just do that automatically? Shouldn't you just know to do it? I'm like, no. <laughs> no. Like, you know, it's it's important to, like, you know, how often do you get your oil changed? Like, you make a note. Like, they have a little sticker that tells you, hey, here's this when yeah. you're like. You see that every day you get in the car. Exactly. Like, we need reminders. Exactly. Like, for every uh, little innocuous, like, dude. and so I have in there, like, spend quality time with son. They're like, wouldn't you do that automatically? I'm like, I, I, in theory, but, yeah. but, you know, I mean, yeah. we, first off, he's getting older. He's got things that he wants to do. My daughter's leaving literally in less than a month to go to Europe for four months. I want to make yeah. sure that those moments yeah. that we have are deliberate. You actually, and this is where we get into guarantee goals. One of the, I'm, we, I want you to kind of go through it, but the thing that really, um, the fourth point, mm -hmm. guaranteed goals force you to be more deliberate was like, yeah, because to your point about the books, like you can't, first off, not everything around a book is writing it. It's the promoting it. It's the, mm -hmm. it, uh, you know, one of the things is like, look at the different cover options that are being presented to me. Like that's part of that process. Mm -hmm. So what are some of the other elements that guarantee goals have? And then how, I mean, we just talked about really how they the, being deliberate for them allows you to guarantee them. Right. Yeah. I mean, they take, they take a lot of time. That's mm -hmm. why you don't start with a guaranteed goal. So they take a significant amount of time An easy goal doesn't. You don't have to rearrange your schedule to do an easy goal because it's not easy if you do. If you have to change your whole life, it's not an easy goal. So that's one of them. But the, I think one of the big things with a guaranteed goal is it's inside your control. So I don't control hitting the New York Times list. I don't. I wish I did. I wish I did. Like when other young authors say to me, oh, my goal is at the New York Times list. I go, it's not. It's not the best goal. Like, let's, let's think I don't control it. Um, you know, I control how many podcast interviews I do largely like, you know, like I control, um, how many, how much time I put into recording reels to sell the book. Like there's a lot of things I do control. Um, so like I look at it that way and, and for my, imagine a teenager, you just mentioned your daughter, like I have a teen who will be applying for college. She doesn't control getting a specific scholarship. She controls applying for 50 scholarships. Mm -hmm. Now, would you say it's a guarantee she'll get more scholarships than if she applied for zero scholarship? Like a hundred percent. And so that's, that's a big distinction is like at Bose, when I worked at Bose in uh, the stereo company in Framingham, Massachusetts, we had a system to release a new product. We controlled that. That was a guaranteed goal that if we do this 18 months, at the end, new speaker. We didn't control if it became a runaway hit. We didn't control if, you know, the part we needed in Taiwan was out or like a boat got jammed in the Suez Canal. There's a million things you don't control. My argument is for the ones you do, if you're deliberate about them, you get to do them more often. And I like when somebody ever says to me like, oh, it's common sense, it's common sense. I always go, well, are you doing it? Like, are you a mul like that financial advice is common sense. Are you currently a multimillionaire with a six pack? Yeah. Like common sense is not that common. <laughs> yeah. It's like, it's extraordinary. If you're not doing it, it must be insane mm -hmm. because otherwise, why wouldn't you do it? So that's what I mean about like, I didn't, again, if I, if I sat down, like my, one of my guaranteed goals I put in the book is I'm going to sell a million books. I didn't come up with that on day one. That would have been so egotistical. That would have been so far. Like it would have been demoralizing. Like it really would have, but I just started climbing a ladder. And when I got into the middle of the ladder, I was like, I could see the top of this ladder pretty clearly. I think if I dedicate more time, I think if I start my own business, I think if I'm brave in these areas, I might have a shot at this guaranteed goal. And now I'm so far along that like, that's going to happen. That's just math. Like if, cause I'm going to continue to write books and my friend, like friend of mine, he's a YouTuber. He wants to have a million subscribers and he's, he realized he's not going to hit his goal by the end of the year. And he felt frustrated by that. And I said, if you hit it in March, just look at it as three months sweeter. Like it was three months sweeter, it's three months sweeter. Cause it took three extra months. Like mm -hmm. what if that, like he's guaranteed to hit it. He's gaining, you know, 50,000 subscribers a month now. Like he's got a momentum, like he's going to do it. There's no way he goes, ah, I got the 900. Never mind. Like there's yeah. no, there's no world where he's doing that. Yeah. He's guaranteed to hit that. But again, he didn't start on day one and go, 
I've never recorded a video, so I'm going to put the pressure on myself to get a million subscribers. And when I only get 40 this week, I'm going to feel so depressed and quit. Like pe- podcasts, I don't know what the stats are. What are the stats on how, like how many new podcasts stop? Oh like, gosh, it's huge. I mean, w- my podcast, which gets, you know, I mean, a decent amount of downloads is yeah. in the top 5%. Because I've been doing it for so long. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Right? But like the average podcast, like most podcasts quit after like four episodes yeah, or six yeah. episodes. They'll do before. they'll do the they'll do the big dump of like four episodes at once. They'll wait and see what happens and then they're like, okay, it didn't work. I'm like No, and yeah, and so like that's not like Again, like if you if it clears out a goal that was going to distract you from an even better goal, I'm fine with that. Yep. But if you're if you're if you're judging this huge goal against the first four episodes, like no wonder we quit our goals. Mm-hmm. I would like if somebody told me like I spoke at Global Leadership Summit, which was a really big stage for me, super fun. It took like 12 years to get on that stage. If somebody had told me at the beginning, hey, it's only going to take a dozen years that wouldn't have been like i'll do it like i didn't put that like no way mm-hmm. i don't have that much optimism but i didn't think that way i was like let me do some easy goals let me grow them let me grow them let me grow them let me do some middle goals let me grow them really grow them. and then before you knew it i was in the middle of the ladder and it was going to happen it's funny because you think about it in terms of like sports like i'm a Bengals fan um mm-hmm. which which have been painful 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 years since like 19- is chase is chase your wide receiver yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah. We got yeah, Burrow. We got Burrow as the quarterback too, right? So it's fantastic, it's like, dude. Yeah, 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 they're fun. Oh, they're fun to watch now, but like in the like after 1988, to them is yeah. a pretty long gap. There is a long gap, and so yeah. it's funny when they made it to the Super Bowl. And I'm not from Cincinnati. I mean, the, Todd Henry and I talk about the Bengals all the time, but I've just was a Bengals mm-hmm. fan because I love their tiger stripe helmets when I was in kindergarten, and I just kind of gravitated towards mm-hmm. that team, but. I stuck with them year after year after year. And I mean, this is kind of like the payoff when they're making it to the Super Bowl. Like I was shook. I was like, this is so amazing. It was that much sweeter because I stuck with all of the, the, the messy middle, the, the struggles to see them. And I know, by the way, had nothing to do with how they did either. It was just like me being a oh, loyal fan. There. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, Sarah asks, a and we got to wrap up pretty soon. I know that, but Sarah has a question. I think we've kind of answered a bit, but do you list out all your ladder rungs at the beginning? Um, I'm going to add a bit to that. You must have some, like, I don't think you add them all. We've, we've, we've kind of discuss that but you've got to have something there so that you know at least you know you've broken them down into manageable steps i would imagine right john yeah so i have some but not all because i'm here's how to think about it september you is smarter than january you Mm -hmm. like it is like march you is smarter than january you i think people lock themselves into goals in january and then don't change and then they don't get to grow they don't get to learn so no i get theoretically I get smarter and smarter as I climb the ladder. So I might know the first handful, but like I was just looking at my notebook. Like one of my goals is I want to really engage in wisdom. I think wisdom is worth more than gold. I think it's so important. So I was like, okay, well, how do I go get wisdom? So I made a list in my notebook of these five ways. And then I started adding to it. And so I started adding to it. So it started small where I was like reading, writing, thinking, like I had small, those are my rungs. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, man, when I go talk to my counselor, like he's a PhD, he's pretty, pretty smart. That counts. So yesterday I saw him, that was an hour and a half conversation, hour and a half wisdom hours. So like, I'll keep adding that. So then the other thing that I benefit from is I get to choose the activity based on the energy level. I, there's sometimes where I don't have enough energy to write, but I can go, man, I got this new book. That's really interesting. It's kind of easy. I'm going to read it. Like, or I've got a, I've got a Jim Rohn podcast, not podcast, um, Jim Rohn audio book from yep. like the eighties. And I'm going to take, I'm going to do your walk around the neighborhood. And that's going to be, you know, something I do. And so then now, like I'm holding up to the people that can see it. Um, yeah. If you look, those are my wisdom hours, uh, in August, like right there, those are the ones. So I know, and I'm, I'm little check marks. I know I've got, I'm 55 hours deep. So then I don't have to go. Like if my goal is to be wise, fuzzy, dude, so fuzzy. Mm-hmm. Qualitative. If I go, it's, quali- yeah. it's a qualitative thing, but you're applying quantitative yeah. principles to yeah. show your progress. And then progress. it happens. Yeah. And then it happens. And then the other thing is it shuts fear up. So when fear naturally comes up and goes, you didn't do anything. You're not getting smart. I go, that's weird. Cause I have like 80 hours I did. And if I spend 80 hours in the pursuit of wisdom this month and I spent 10 last month, 
it's guaranteed that I have more wisdom this month because like I'm just putting in the time and putting in the effort. And so, yeah, I'll know the first couple rungs, but I won't know all of them because new ones will come up as I get better at the goal. Right. Because it's, it's a, the familiarity part. It's actually, honestly enough, oddly enough, wisdom that shows yeah, you. That yeah. You yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, Hey, here we go. Yeah. So I, that, you know, for me, and then I get the surprise of it, yeah. but, uh, but I'm the one that keeps the ladder. So yeah. like, I write this stuff down. I don't hope I remember the ladder. I'm like, oh no, what's that? No, that counts. That'd be cool. Like, let me, how can I refine that? How can I tweak this? You know, and, and then it theoretically gets better. John, this has been a great conversation. Um, the book is called All It Takes is a Goal, the three-step plan to ditch regret and tap into your massive potential. We we could have, I mean, I had I had a plethora of notes here. We wow, touched that's on awesome, man. we touched on we touched on a few of them, but I know that I mean as I went through this book, it's dog eared like quotes and I love and it, points. dude. That's encouraging. So, yeah. So um where can people pick up the book and where can they keep up with the work that you're doing? Yeah, so the book's available anywhere books are sold. I read the audiobook and there's 10 bonus stories on it. So if you're listening to a podcast and you're audio person, I am too. Um, that's what's been interesting. I sell twice as many audiobooks as I do digital books. Um, I think podcasts like yours, Mike, have taught people there's real content that you can grow and learn from in audio form. And now people have returned to audiobooks. Like it's fat, that's fascinating to me. Um, JohnAcuff.com is my website, J O N A C U F F.com. Um, I have a podcast called All It Takes Is a Goal where I talk to people about the goals they're working on. And then I'm all over social media as John Acuff. Thanks for having a productive conversation with me, John. Yeah, it was fun. Thanks for having me back on. I hope you enjoyed this Flashback Friday episode of A Productive Conversation. To check out the show notes related to this podcast, just go to mikevardy.com slash podcast 544, and you'll be able to check out the show notes there. But you can also do that wherever you get your podcast, perhaps even the device slash platform that you're using right now to listen to it. So Apple Podcasts, Spotify, even YouTube. Subscribing to the show, that makes it easy for you to catch any of the upcoming episodes, which includes these Flashback Friday episodes, the PM Talks monthly series that I have with my good friend Patrick Rome. We've got another episode of that dropping next time here on the show, as well as any other new and original episodes that we deliver every single week, multiple times per week now we're the podcast so again subscribe to the show it makes it easy for you to keep up and it also supports the show another way to support the show is to check out the sponsors that you heard during the conversation today go to mikevardy.com slash podcast sponsors click on the links of whichever sponsors resonate with you and that way they know that we sent you again it's another way to support the show that's it for this time as i mentioned next episode it's another in the pm talks monthly series with my good friend patrick roan until then i'm mike vardy the host of a productive conversation reminding you to stop doing productive and start being productive. See you later.